Yesterday, we interviewed Ryan Belrose, a Calgarian who attended in court this week when the three Muslim rioters that beat up a Jewish family, when those rioters finally got their sentence. And as Ryan told us yesterday, the sentence was pitiful, not a day in jail. Fines of three, four, and five hundred dollars, really what you get for a big speeding ticket these days. Oh, and they had to write an essay about the Charter of Rights. What a scandal. The riot itself was more than a scandal. It was a crime, a hate crime, an anti-Semitic incident, the such that you'd find in Gaza or Paris. But the fact that the prosecutor just didn't give a damn is even more appalling. So what were the police doing? They were not there at the riot that day, as you can see in the video. It was a free-for-all. There was no law of the land. It was the law of the jungle. So what were the cops doing? Well, we put in an access to information request to the Calgary Police Service to see what their email traffic and their chit-chat about all these things said. Why weren't they there at the riot? What did they say afterwards? Well, let's go through some of the interesting findings in this access to information document. Let me start with Staff Sergeant Asif Rashid. He's with their criminal intelligence unit. And you can see he's talking about the victims and Rebecca Snookle, the lawyer we hired to help them. But look at how he describes them. Look at the words there. He put victims of violence in quotation marks. And he put the word victims in quotation marks again. What, were they not real victims? They were just victims? Asif Rashid, Asif Rashid. Do you think if they were Muslim victims that had been beaten up by a Jewish mob, do you think Asif Rashid would still call them just victims or would he call them victims? But was he alone? What did other cops of the Calgary Police Service have to say that day? Well, lucky for us, the Calgary Police Service is so well funded that they have a battalion of no fewer than eight cops. They don't ride in cars or motorcycles, they ride a desk on Twitter. They tweet and Facebook and they fight crime online. I'll give you some examples of that. I had asked them if they would talk to me about the fact that they really weren't there on the riot and they agreed to an interview to explain themselves. But the chief of police himself ordered them not to talk about it. He was so concerned to keep the riot down low that he instructed them not to do interviews. You can see Lindsay Nikoluk herself saying that the chief told them to shut up about the riot and maybe, maybe no one else would notice. You can see her ascribing the cancellation of that interview to the chief's personal intervention. Look at Riley Babbitt. That's another Calgary Police Service Twitter cop. He notes that I quoted their official excuse for not showing up at the riot for a dropped communication. What an excuse that was. Literally 800, a mob of 800 pro-Hamas protesters on the steps of City Hall and a dropped communication is why they weren't there. Yeah, got it. Well, I put that on my show at the Old Sun News Network and Riley Babbitt was so giddy about being mentioned. He said he was almost famous, but it wasn't an actual news outlet, so he wasn't really famous because the Sun News Network wasn't a real news network. You know, they're like teenagers. Oh, he's on Twitter. He doesn't have real friends. I mean, they're not out there keaping the streets safe for Jewish families beaten, beaten up from Muslim rioters, but literally on work time, they're gossiping and chatting and swapping stories about Twitter and Facebook and who's on what. I mean, it's this is the Calgary Police Service. Eight people doing this all day. That's maybe why they didn't have the cops to stop the riot. Mark Smith was another Twitter cop who noted that I had mentioned that they put up the wrong place to phone in uh, tips about these rioters. And I had, uh, I had indicated that the Calgary Police Service put up the wrong place for people to report in tips and they fixed it and I said that they paid more attention to my Twitter feed than they did to 911 and he actually wrote back, true very true that they monitor my Twitter account more closely than they monitor 911. This isn't about me gossiping about them or their <laughs> disagreeing with me. This is about the fact that the Calgary Police Service were obsessed by this riot. No, no, let me correct that. They were obsessed by the PR consequences 
of the riot, weren't they? They were obsessed by shutting down interviews about the riot. The chief himself made that call. They were obsessed by what I said on the Sun News Network. They were obsessed by what my Twitter feed said. They were obsessed with the fact that someone would dare call themselves a victim, or as Staff Sergeant Asif Rashid said, a victim.